Hey, it's Sam Hendrick again, Bentley Systems, back again to continue our series on MicroStation Connect Edition, The Basics. In this video, what we're gonna talk about is basically four tools. We're gonna to talk about the copy element, the rotate element, the copy parallel for AutoCAD users, it's called offset, and your plus one is gonna be copy parallel just a portion of an element, it's really cool. And then we'll finish off with a stretch element tool. So let's go ahead, get started. In this video, we're going to be talking about several tools in MicroStation, the Copy tool, Rotate, Copy Parallel, and Stretch. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open the first file, Copy tool. Now the first thing is, we're going to look and see what workflow I'm set to. Right now, I have my workflow set to Drawing, and I have the tab set to Home. Under the Home, you're going to see a group called Manipulate, and that's where we're going to be working today. So the first icon we're going to look at is Copy. So I'm going to go ahead and select this icon. And my task here is the drawing you see before you is basically a cross section. And on the cross section, we have some rebar. And this red dot represents a plan view of the rebar. My job is to copy that to the right and create two copies centered about this rebar right here. So on the tool settings window, I have an option to indicate how many copies I want to make. In this case, I want to make two copies. So I'm going to change that number to two. I'm going to select the element that I want to copy, which is the red dot. I'm going to move my cursor to the right. Now, the distance I want to move it to the right and the direction are indicated by my cursor. And what I want to do is go halfway relative to this rebar right here. To do this, I'm going to use AccuDraw and I want to hit the Enter key, which is Smart Lock. This locks me on the axis. You can see as I move my cursor, I'm constrained on that axis. Now I'm just going to simply move to the midpoint of this rebar, data, and then a reset. And now you can see I've got my three copies, two additional. Now in the next example, I'm going to take two of the three dots and I'm going to copy them straight up. In this case, I want to make four copies. So I'm going to change on my tool settings window, the value from two to four. This time I'm going to select just two of these dots. I'm going to Hold the left button down, drag across, right to left is crossing, left to right is inside. So I'm going to be doing crossing. So I'm going to cross over. Now to select the second one, I'll hold down the control key on my keyboard, drag across, selecting the second one. Now that I have them both selected, I'm going to pick a point to copy from, and that'll be the center of the circle, data, move my cursor up. Again, AccuDraw is docked at the bottom, waiting for me to input a value. I'm going to type in one which is going to be one foot, and I want to make sure I'm straight up. Then I'm going to data, left click, and then right click, reset. And there I've got my copy straight up there. So that's the copy tool, pretty basic, making multiple copies. Let's go to our next file. I'm going to go to rotate tool. In this file, we're going to talk about the rotate tool. Going back up to our manipulate group, here's our rotate right there. On the tool settings window, we've got three different methods. We're going to be looking at active angle and we're going to be looking at three points. So I'm going to choose active angle. And right now the setting is set to 32 degrees. I'm going to select this first element right here. I'm going to do a data. And then you're going to see as I move my cursor, it's looking for a pivot point. So I'm going to move my cursor to the end of the line. I'm going to do a data. In this case, I didn't check copies, so it actually rotated or moved the original element. So I'm going to do an undo, control Z. The next method we're going to look at is by three points. And in this case, we do want to check copies. And we're going to set the copy value to three, because what we want to do is take this line right here, and we want to copy it down into the right. And we want to copy it three times to create a fan effect. So we're going to be selecting the element we want to copy. Status bar in the bottom left indicates enter pivot point. That's going to be this point in our example, a data. And then it looks like we're drawing a dashed line. But what it's asking us to do is locate the second point. So I'm going to go to the midpoint of this line. I'm going to data. That's the start of the rotation right there. Now, as I move my cursor out, as I move over the arc, you can see it's going to the midpoint. That's because the snap that I'm using, key point snap, its divisor value is set to two. So we're going to change that. I'm going to use an AccuDraw shortcut. On my keyboard, I hit the letter K. You'll see pop up 
key point snap divisor. Right now it's set to two. I'm gonna type in three and I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. Now the value is set to three, and as I move my cursor over the arc, I'm now dividing it by thirds. So the first copy I'm gonna make is gonna be one third down that arc. I'm gonna do a data, left click, reset, and now I have a fan across there. So that's rotate, and that's the method of three points. So let's go to the next file. So let's go ahead and change files. We're gonna to go to copy parallel. This is obviously a civil engineering drawing and we have an alignment and we have here our edge of pavement. What we need to do is create an edge of pavement on the other side of the alignment. So we're gonna be using the copy parallel tool. I'm gonna to go back up to my manipulate group and there's my move parallel or also known as copy parallel. On the tool settings window, there are three different methods and we have an option to define the distance by checking the box and entering a value. We also have an option to, when we create the new element, the attributes used to create that can be our active attributes, not the attributes of the element we're copying. And we also have an option to make a copy, which is typically what we do with this tool. So the use active attributes is checked, make copy is checked, and the method we're gonna be doing is called element. We're gonna be selecting this element, but we wanna make sure that our active attributes are set for the asphalt. And if I look up at my attributes on my home tab, you can see they're set for an alignment. Well, I'm going to match the attributes of this asphalt, and I'm gonna do that with the technique that we've talked about in previous videos in this series. I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, and I'm going to data. And now if I look at my attributes, you can see they've changed. So now we're gonna make the copy, we're gonna data on the alignment, move our cursor in the direction we plan to go, AccuDraw rotates the compass, it's looking for us to put a value in, I'm gonna type in 17, and then I'm going to data, left click, and it wants to make another copy, I'm going to hit reset, that completes it. So there's my copy parallel and entire element. Now I'm gonna do an undo, Control Z, and I'm gonna zoom in up here. So these three lines, are the beginnings of a rock blanket area that I need to define here. And this area needs a line or element to basically create a boundary. I'm gonna be demonstrating your plus one example here, which is gonna be copy parallel portion of an element. So on my tool settings window, I'm gonna change from element to portion of an element. Again, I have use active attributes selected. So these attributes on this element are different than my alignment. So again, I'm going to Alt Data. This will match the attributes of those elements. Now I want to get just a portion of my alignment, not the entire thing. So I'm gonna start over here at an approximate location, Data. You can see a thick black line appear. This is indicating how much of the element I'm going to copy, the portion of the element. So I'm gonna move it down here, clearly past that vertical line above. I'm going to Data. Now it wants to know how far off I want the copy to be. I'm gonna pick this point right here, data. And again, it wants to make another one. I'm gonna hit reset. Now I've got this area approximately defined. I'm gonna show you a nice little shortcut tool that's gonna to create a shape based upon this area. This is up on our groups group. I'm gonna click create region, having it set to flood, and I'm not gonna keep the original elements. I'm gonna get rid of them and create a brand new element. I'm gonna move my cursor here, data, in the area to flood. You can see a highlight, I'm gonna data to accept, and now I've created, basically trimmed everything up, but now I have a closed element. So if I go to my element selection tool and I hover over it, you can see it's a complex shape. It's made up of three lines and a arc. So that is our copy parallel tool, and the last one we'll look at is gonna be stretch. So let's go ahead and leave this file, and let's go to our Next file. In this example, we have a side view or elevation of a pipe drawing. And our job is to take this section of pipe here and move it or stretch it to the right a distance of one foot. Again, we're gonna go up to our manipulate group and here's the icon for stretch. I'm gonna select that. Now it wants me to define an area which will determine which vertices of the element are gonna be stretched. It's a rectangle, so I'm gonna move my cursor up in this location, left click, gonna move my cursor down, left click, 
you want to make sure that the ends of your lines are inside the fence boundary here. If they are not inside the fence boundary, then they won't be stretched. Now I need to pick a point to stretch from, and I'm going to pick the midpoint of our pipe here. Left click, data, move my cursor to the right, that's the direction, and I'm going to do it a distance of one foot. So I'm going to type in one, which is a foot. I'm going to data, and then reset, and there I've stretched it over. So that's a quick way to stretch some elements over there. Hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.